So today I'm going to talk to you about some of the top places to live in Sydney. I'm going to give you the pros and the cons and if you're moving over to Sydney then maybe this will be helpful for you. I'm making this video because when I first moved over here I did zero research because I didn't really know where I'd end up in general. So when we got to Sydney it was very overwhelming to like yes great you found a city to live in but you've then got like so many different places in Sydney to decide where you want to live. So as a whole, in like my experience over here over the last three years and like the people that I know, the people that I've met, these are the top places and the most popular places that working holiday visas tend to live. So I'll start off with the less obvious ones and then I'll put like the more obvious ones at the end just in case you're already like, I've already heard of that one. So first off is Manly, which is a place that if you haven't done much research of Sydney, you've probably never heard of, but it is a beautiful place. It is a beachside um, town, was it? No, it wouldn't be a town, suburb, yeah, suburb, which has really great like family vibes. It's not so much um, a place to go on like a night out, but it's got like so many uh, places to eat, like cute little cafes, coffee shops. It's got a massive beach. It's got stunning coastal walks and it's got a really, really nice view of the um, Sydney Harbour Bridge. It's one of the places that I would say is less busy. So if you think of somewhere like um, really well known, like Bondi is very, very popular, very jam packed because it's so busy. Manly is just as beautiful as Bondi and like, honestly, I think it's actually nicer than Bondi, and I live in Bondi, um, because it's less well known, so you have a lot more space out there, the beaches are less rammed, um, and it's just really, really beautiful. I'll give like a couple of pros, a couple of pro uh, cons. First pro, I would say it's much less dense than other popular beach locations in Sydney, such as Bondi, um, which is always great, because it just feels less like touristy and less chaotic. And second pro is you've got an unreal selection of bars, restaurants, um, coffee shops. Yeah, you will literally, there's always somewhere to go. Con, I would say, um, is getting to the city is quite difficult. You have to get the ferry to the city. Um, you can get the, you can get public transport like a bus or something, but it takes like, it takes like an hour and the ferry takes like 20 minutes. So it's sort of a no-brainer. If you're a bit bad on water like I am, I you know if you'll get if you're working in the city every day that's probably quite intense to get the ferry over also depending on weather it might be quite a rough ride but but yeah it's basically a con because you have to get the ferry over to the city and a lot of people do work in the city the next place is surrey hills which is somewhere that i lived for about six months when i first moved over here because it was one of the places that came up as like the most popular to live um uh, surrey hills is in the city so it's not by the beach you do have to get like public transport to the beach or drive. Um, it's not walking distance or anything like that. Very much city, suburb, and also like just outside the CBD. I just had to readjust because I was running out of battery. Um, but pros and cons of Surrey Hills. Pros, I would say it is a such a lively area. Like it's so cultural, it's so diverse. There's always something happening. It's like, yeah amazing for a night out basically amazing to go for drinks for dinner it's really yeah if you're looking for a fun night out basically sorry hills sorry hills um another pro is that there's some really beautiful parks nearby you've got moore park you've got prince alfred park um which are parks that i very much enjoyed because i was actually in lockdown in surrey hills for like three months of the six months i lived there Oh, and also, I know I've already done two pros, but it is so close. Most, like, nine times out of ten, people getting jobs here are going to work in the CBD, um, which is, like, the city centre, and as Surrey Hills is right outside, it's literally, like, a ten-minute bus drive, so your commute is so short, which is amazing. So, a couple of negatives about living in Surrey Hills, I would say, I mean, this is give or take, depending on what your view of where you want to live is. It's a massive negative for me when I lived there is that it isn't close to the beach. It does take about 45 minutes, I would say, on public transport, maybe half an hour to 45 minutes to get to the beach. And on hot summer days, like on the weekend when everyone wants to go to the beach, the public transport is absolutely packed. Like the buses are absolutely rammed. Um, so yeah, I would say that is honestly a massive, a massive con because you want to go to the beach when it's hot, so it's 
something to consider. Another con is that the buildings in Surrey Hills are quite old. They're very rustic. They're not like, they're not new builds. They're not very modern. Um, and they, that being said, like rustic building sorts of, sort of come with their own problems. Like when I stayed in a place in Surrey Hills, it was really nice. Like it was a big house and we had like three roommates. It was really, really nice like and spacious however because it was so rustic it sort of came with you know like a lot of cockroaches <laughs> I know that sounds vile but cockroaches are a thing in Sydney especially in summer um and in the rustic houses there's loads of little like nooks and crannies for them to get in whereas now I'm staying in like a modern place and we have no cockroaches at all because it's all been like freshly sealed um so yeah, if you are wanting to stay in an apartment that's more like a modern look, then you probably won't find many of them in Surrey Hills. And if you do, it'll be like slim pickings. Because it's very rustic vibes. The next place um, is called Ranwick, which is just left of the eastern suburbs. It is still classed as eastern suburbs. It's just not directly on the beach line. It's a little bit inland. Some pros and cons for living in Ranwick. Um, I'd say pros, and this is the most um, common reason why people live there. If you can't find any um, rental properties on the East Coast, right by the beach, Ramwick is a great option because you literally just step in a little bit to the left. You can get a bus down to the beach in maybe 10, 15 minutes. You could even walk if you wanted to. Um, and they also have great transport to get into the city. So it is sort of like the best of both worlds. Saying the transport thing, however, it is great transport because it is a bus into the city, but I'm pretty sure there's like one bus. Uh, so in the mornings, it gets very busy with commuters going in, lots of English and Irish people on the bus um, going from Ramwick into the city for work. But if it's somewhere where if you wanted to live close to the beach, but you didn't want to pay like huge rental prices that the beach properties get you, Ramwick is a great alternative. Some cons of living in Ramwick, which would be probably the most important to consider, um, just because of how packed I feel like the eastern suburbs, actual suburbs on the beach are getting. Randwick prices are increasing a lot, so you will end up paying a higher rent just to be in like the eastern suburbs bubble, um, compared to like being in the city or being like out west. I literally know no one that lives out west though. I only know Australian people who live out west because I feel like most people just come for the beach basically. So you want to be somewhere where you've got access to the beach. Um, but yeah, Ramwick is definitely ramping up like popularity wise because it's such an easy access. But obviously that means that the accommodation is harder to find and the rental prices are shooting up because landlords are obviously taking advantage of that. Which is fair enough, you know, like... <laughs> If you're a landlord, you're not gonna be like, no, I'm not gonna charge you a lot of money just to be nice. This is it's a job, isn't it? So next up is one that I'm very biased about because I live here, Bondi. <laughs> um, Bondi is a very popular east place in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. It is right by the beach um, and sort of split into like a few different areas. You've got Bondi Junction and Bondi Road, You've then got South Bondi, and then North Bondi, which is on the other side. Bondi Beach is basically like a giant shallow horseshoe. So it like, like what I was just saying is that you've got the South Bondi, then you've sort of got like the middle of Bondi, and then you've got North Bondi. All of these different areas have different um, sorts of people that live there, I would say. Like for me, I think North Bondi, we lived in North Bondi for about three months and that was much more laid back, a lot more like, family orientated and a lot more like calm whereas central bondi is where you've got all of the pubs the nights out the um hostels for working holiday makers and yeah it's just like a lot busier there especially like on friday nights and saturday nights like you go out and be like wow like it's super busy out here and then south bondi is like the bondi iceberg so there's like not heaps going on down there to be honest that's more like residential houses Pros and cons of living in Bondi. I mean, the most obvious pro is that it's like an iconic area, isn't it? Like, it's beautiful. You've got Bondi Beach right by you. You've got so many cafes, so many like coffee shops, restaurants, um, little jewelry, boutique places. Like, it's really 
great place to you can easily spend the weekend like if you couldn't be bothered to go out you can just walk out your front door and you've got like loads to keep you entertained a couple of negatives would be it's very it's a very population very popular destination for tourists and working holiday makers who are in like the traveling section of their working holiday visa um which isn't necessarily a bad thing however uh, like like I said on like a Friday night, Saturday night, it can get really loud, uh, can, like can get very rowdy um, and yeah I'm kind of glad where we are at the moment we're set back a little bit so we're not right on the beachfront because I imagine if you were right on the beachfront it would be pretty intense um, and noisy and just like super populated basically just because it's such a beautiful place to live and everyone wants to go there and everyone wants to see all the like iconic views which is completely valid. My final place is Kuji which is also a place in the eastern suburbs. It's like a few stops down from Bondi Beach so this is like the coast sea land. You've got Bondi, you've got um, Tamarama, you've got Bronte and then you've got Kuji right down at the bottom and there's a amazing and very famous coastal walk, the Bondi to Kuji coastal walk where it takes you past like all the little beaches on the way um, and it is an unreal walk. That is definitely one of the pros of living in Bondi as well as Kuji so I'll just throw that one in there for free. Kuji is very very popular with working holiday visas. A couple of pros of Kuji I would say very similar to Bondi, you've got beautiful walks, You've got beautiful beaches, um, there's loads of food places and shops for you to like have a mooch around on the weekend. I also think that Kuji has like a really big community feel, like I feel like more so than Bondi to be honest. I'd say the most important con from living in Kuji is probably the transfer, the transport into the city. Um, there isn't, and also the transport to, to other places, like even to like the transport to Bondi or to Bronte or something like that. It's you can only get buses. They don't have any train stations, um, whereas Bondi has Bondi Junction, which is a main train um, train stop, which takes you straight into the city. Um, it's really loud birds. I'm sorry if you're going to be able to hear them. But Kuji is just buses, so it gets very very busy whenever you are travelling to or from Kuji on the bus and yeah I just feel like they're less reliable they're less reliable than the trains I would also say the rental prices for Kuji but to be honest right now that sort of applies to every single place that I've said because there is or was a rental crisis going on I think I'm pretty sure it's still going on it was crazy when we were looking for this place we've been here for about been here for about eight months now so I don't know if it, things have gotten a, maybe gotten a little bit better. Obviously the places that I've been talking to about are really popular places so when the rent's going to go up they will be going up in these five places more than everywhere else. For a summary if you're wanting me to break it down a little bit and you're a bit like well like what have you just said that was a lot of information. If you're wanting more beach vibes and you've got Bondi Beach, Kuji and Manly which are really popular Bondi and Kuji is on like the city side and Manly you have to get the ferry because it's over like close to the northern beaches. Um, if you're preferring city vibes then you've got Surrey Hills slash Paddington that's quite like the benefits of them. The pros and cons of Surrey Hills is basically the same as Paddington um, and you've got Ramwick which is like a bit inner as well. I will also just throw in Waterloo is quite popular which is also very city based, even more city than um, Paddington and Surrey Hills and you can get really nice modern apartments there. That's just an extra bonus just in case you want to google it. Um, that is everything for today's video, thanks for watching. I feel like I say sorry if I've rambled at the end of each video but I don't plan them out, I just sort of sit down and just like blurt out so maybe I should start planning. But thanks for watching. I will see you in next week's video. Bye.